All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to our session on community adoption. My name is Andrew Hayes, and I'm going to be your moderator uh, up until lunchtime today. Um, uh, so we're going to be talking about community adoption of BibCrank specifically and of linked data more generally. I'll introduce our speakers in just a minute and, and then get out of their way to get them up here. But I think this is a really nice opportunity to sort of take an international look, starting with Canada, moving on to Europe, and then having uh, Laura back clean up for us on the relationship between an international users group and a US users group as related uh, to linked data. Since we only have three presenters, uh, we had discussed this, uh, and unfortunately Katie is not able to join us, but Dan is going to fill both roles for the uh, Canadian update. Um, uh, we, we thought that 90 minutes was a bit long for one presentation and two lightning talks. It was sort of like a long storm <laughs> talk, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> a lightning talk. Um, so our speakers have generously agreed to sort of uh, split their time evenly, and Dan had a nice suggestion that, uh, as, as allows, we have time for discussion about adoption generally, uh, whether it's adoption of new frameworks or adoption of BibFrame or adoption of, of linked data. So the win-win for you all is that we either get Jason's request for more engagement or you get some time back, right? So it's a win-win it's a <laughs> in our 90-minute in our nine minute session. Um, so, so let me introduce our, our speakers. So first up, we're going to have Dan Scott. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Dan is Associate Librarian at Laurentian University and a PhD student at McGill University. He's been involved in openly licensed things, documentation code, and most recently data since the dawn of the 21st century, which seemed not that long ago, but now seems <laughs> longer ago than any of us care to, to think about. Uh, Mikla Casolini is uh, Managing Director of Casolini Libri, uh, which produces authority and bibliographic data, supplies books and journals, and handles e-content for publishers and libraries. He's been an active member in the standardization processes for the book sector since the 90s and is currently involved in work on the development of BibFrame practices. Among his recent interests in the digital transition uh, in the current situation of humanities academic publishing, in particular, the potential risks of marginalization facing these subject areas and analysis of collaborative measures that can contribute to preserving cultural heritage for the future. And also a regular contributor to LD, all things LD4, so thank you for being here too. And then finally, Laura Ackerman uh, is currently product manager for Discovery, uh, Emory University's discovery system based on Ex Libris' Primo. She's also the co-coordinator of the Igaloo Aluna Linked Open Data Working Group, uh, an Ex Libris customer organization group focused on advocacy for customers' linked open data needs and interests. Her long career at Emory Libraries includes leadership of major projects involving cataloging, retrospective conversion, systems migration, metadata digital library applications, and a pilot learning project for linked open data. Uh, about linked uh, data, she's still interested and hopeful. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think interested, that's a good sort of moniker for all of us at this point. Yeah. <laughs> we are, we are uh, interested and hopeful. Um, so uh, with, without further ado, although I know no one who does anything with ado, <laughs> uh, I will let Dan get up here and get us started. So first, I'd like to acknowledge that the land we're on is uh, traditional territory of the Massachusetts people um, and has long been used as a uh, site of meeting and exchange, so we're definitely home of that tradition. Um, Katie, as uh, mentioned, cannot be here today, but uh, she's been a driving force in our, uh, our task force, so um, her suggestion definitely, definitely noted. So to start with, uh, Canada's land mass is very large. Um, uh, there are, according to Marshall Greetings uh, Libraries.org, uh, 3,200 libraries registered um, in Canada. Uh, we know there are actually many more than that, um, but uh, that's one of the best sources of data that we have. Um, so 3,000 libraries seems like a lot to consider um, when you are looking at a potential transition from Mark to BibFrame. That's a lot of organizations uh, that need to get a lot of skills and a lot of technology. Um, for 
comparison, the uh, United States has 114,000 uh, libraries registered in uh, uh, libraries.org. So um, we all have a lot of work to consider ahead of us to make this thing actually um, happen. And so the Canadian Federation of Library Associations, seeing this, um, said, hmm, this seems like a problem. We should probably do something about that. Um, for those who don't know, the Canadian Federation of Library Associations is the successor to the Canadian Library Association. Um, it differs in that it is just a federation of library associations as opposed to having individual membership possibilities. So not quite for our American friends, not quite like the ALA. So uh, the new home of the Cataloging and Metadata Standards Committee uh, for Canada is part is uh, the CFLA. And so the CMSC said, hey, we really need to look into this problem of BibFrame or not a problem, this opportunity, but how are we going to make have libraries take advantage of this opportunity? Um, so they decided to create a task force. Um, so the task force has been given a mandate and a number of us were invited to join the task force. Um, uh, it seems like pretty much anybody in Canada who had some knowledge of uh, linked data, some experience and uh, interest in the, the subject uh, were, were kind of started to be pulled into it. Um, so that launched in late 2018. And uh, overall, the requirements are that uh, this task force needs to make recommendations by May 2020 uh, um, on how the CFLA and the um, Cataloging and Metadata Standards Committee, and currently called FASTA in, um, in the mandate, but has now changed to the Federation de Milieu Documentaire, um, can support um, these, these transitions. And so one of the specific call-outs was a survey uh, to gauge the understanding of BitFrame. So that's why we now have a subcommittee. So if you follow along, um, we have this small group of people who are now trying to uh, uh, resolve this problem for uh, our 3,000 plus libraries in Canada. Or at least find out what the state of things are. So um, when you think library survey research, um, I'm a recent uh, PhD student and have gone through research design and looked at a lot of library literature and um, I'm looking at it in a new light. So um, our group has decided to take a, a, a fairly serious approach uh, to, to going forward with this. So rather than the sort of standard model in library uh, research uh, for surveys of identifying mailing lists and having people opt in uh, we are looking at uh, doing a stratified random sample to get a, try and get a real representative sample of the libraries across Canada uh, for respondents. Um, of course, we are looking at, uh, we're going to um, go for uh, research ethics board approval because we are dealing with human responses. Um, our PI is uh, Heather Pretty at uh, uh, Memorial University of Newfoundland, so she'll be taking it, uh, shepherding it through the process and uh, uh, folding in the feedback. She's taking over from Katie, who um, we will have data management uh, in place so that not only can the team access this, and this has already started with some of the data that Marshall Breeding has shared with us, so we have uh, limited access to the data, the contact data for those libraries. But also, with the results, we want to make as much of that um, publicly available as possible so that others can build on, on what we found or point out where we made errors. You know, that's what it's all about. Um, and I think for me, one of the most critical parts is that uh, we want to have a survey instrument that is based on validated uh, instruments. So um, not just assembling a set of questions that seem to kind of get at the, uh, uh, the answers that we want, but something that's um, been validated in other fields uh, that we can bring forward. And so it has some level of uh, uh, transfer, but transferability to our domain. Um, and because we're looking at a fairly large set of, uh, uh, of responses to deal with, we want this to be quantitative. Um, so as much as possible, keep it to multiple choice or Likert scales, um, you know, one to seven uh, in, uh, sort of responses. Short answer, absolutely necessary, but that's still going to be a pain to, to kind of turn through. I love qualitative research, I'd love to do that, but to try and get a sense of the overall Canadian status, it doesn't seem to be so for our research questions, um, we're still actually pinning these down. Um, our group first met in January, and uh, um, we are agreed that we need to define our research questions before we actually define uh, um, 
survey questions. So um, we have taken on, uh, in addition the, to the understanding that libraries have of BigQuery, we've also taken on the readiness. It seems like this is a good opportunity to combine those two questions in a single survey. Um, so that forms the first two questions. And we're kicking around the idea of a third one, um, uh, and we're not 100% sure uh, where this one is going to be, but um, there seems to be an understanding that, or perhaps an assumption, that the level of understanding of BibFrame of many libraries is going to be relatively low, and that there will be gaps uh, that need to be filled, filled with training, and so there is a question about maybe there are uh, things that libraries expect. So for understanding, um, the approach that uh, we are headed right now is to uh, try and take uh, take a page out of the sort of math, uh, science, and social sciences fields of having uh, two or three tier uh, questions. So really, it's sort of a set of quizzes across categories of understanding about BibFrame and probably linked data. Um, and the two tier or three tier approach is you ask a question, a multiple choice question. Um, and then you ask a follow-up question that asks the person why they chose the answer that they gave in the first place. So you're trying to see if they actually understand what the connection is between the question that we asked and the response that they gave. Um, and the third tier is if you really want to get uh, confidence um, to eliminate the sort of multiple sort of guess approach is the uh, Likert scale, that would say, say from a scale of one to seven on how confident are you that your answer is correct. Um, so we're really trying to take uh, almost a, a scholastic approach to assessing the understanding um, that uh, our libraries have. Um, and then on readiness, uh, we're borrowing from the health uh, health field. Um, Wiener and had uh, proposed a conceptual framework for the operation, uh, the organizational readiness for implementing change. Um, and that was uh, then turned into an, an instrument that uh, Shea et al. Um, had validated through several studies, uh, which ends up being about 10 questions. And it's really focused on assessing the commitment of an organization to a given change, as well as the efficacy that that organization has to make that change. Um, so efficacy is the ability, so whether they have the resources that they need and the sort of the understanding that they need commitment, uh, hopefully it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, change valence is currently in there, but it's probably going to be dropped because valence in the conceptual <coughs> framework is a determinant. It, uh, it uh, impacts whether uh, commitment and efficacy levels are high, but to determine readiness, you really just need to determine the efficacy and commitment. So um, we'll probably break this down to two questions. And then the inspected training, one of the reasons this is a difficult, um, still sort of in flux uh, question is um, it's a bit of a confounding factor because there are many different kinds of training materials. Um, there are many different providers of potential training materials and there are many different areas in which training might be needed. Um, so it's one thing to have a basic understanding of what like data is. It's another thing to understand the big frame ontology um, it's a third thing to apply that to whatever system you might be running or moving to. Um, and then you may need application profiles to be developed and you might have uh, internal documentation. So um, there are many different questions and this seems like, uh, my personal perspective is that it seems like it might be a little bit early. Um, we may want to find out what the understanding and readiness is first, identify the gaps and then follow up um, with, uh, with questions around training possibly a whole different uh, data collection approach. Surveys might not be the right approach for this. So for the sampling, as I mentioned uh, earlier, we're looking at a stratified random sample. Um, so to get statistical power, we're trying to target um, about 10% of the, the libraries. That's um, it's very optimistic, I think, because uh, the when I asked about the resources that uh, CFLA can provide, um, we're told, well, you can apply for grants if you'd like. <laughs> so we'll have to see how feasible this is. Um, and the reason we're looking at trying to get two respondents per library is one, we want to get the perspective of the people who are most closest to implementing that change, both at the 
metadata and cataloging side of, of an operation as well as at the systems level of the, the operation. Um, two, uh, for the uh, organizational readiness for implementation of change framework uh, and much of the literature on change readiness for change assessment, um, the, uh, the guidance is that you should try and assess all of the members of a given organization and then aggregate the results. Now that's obviously not going to be possible uh, for the number of libraries we want to assess um, to get a good feel across uh, our nation of uh, what we're missing. So we're modifying it somewhat, and that could be a potential innovation or possibly a limitation of our, uh, of our research. Um, in terms of analysis at this stage, we're just looking at trying to identify the patterns. Um, so things like language are very interesting to us as a bilingual nation. Actually, uh, given this is the year of indigenous languages, um, we should also note that we have uh, over 60 indigenous languages um, within Canada uh, that uh, we're hoping BibFrame and Linked Data can provide a better uh, approach for representing not just language, but also the cultural difference um, in, in the way that things are described, um, and that uh, communities will have more control. Um, but also things like just the size of thinking that possibly combining the responses of the systems, systems librarian type person and the metadata cataloging uh, library or coordinator persons uh, to get an understanding of the, the organization as a whole may be a, a worthwhile approach or not. Um, we have more to do. And speaking of more to do, by uh, the one date that we have is May 2020 to try and provide this uh, set of responses back to CFLA, um, but we have a lot of work to do along the way to try and make sure that our uh, survey is a, a, a solid instrument. Um, so the pilot is going to be very important to make sure that uh, the questions that we're asking are understood um, or that we can re redefine. We need to try and flesh out that list of libraries um, and find the contacts and actually contact them um, and figure out how we're going to do that for Probably have time to do Q and A. Do we want to do Q and A? Oh, sure. We yeah. can do that. Sure. Quick questions. Yeah. You're if, if there's a quick question, well, it's fresh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, I, so your survey is going to the metadata community and then the IT, the systems, systems folks. So, what's, right? Is that uh, that was what I understood? So we are going to target. Yeah. So we're going to target the libraries right. and then ask each library to yes have the survey sent to the two. Yes. No. Right. So yes, you can you can look at it that way. Okay. Um, so I guess my question is, so one of the, um, I hate to say the word, but I'm going to use it anyway, obstacles is probably not the, the most um, best word, but um, that, that I think some of us find in our libraries um, is getting administration on board. Mm -hmm. So as much as you may want to, <laughs> to ask the metadata people and the, I, and the IIT people about implementation, really they're not, what are they going to be able to do unless they have administration on board and, and how, how are you approaching that issue. Yeah, so it's interesting. The way that we've evolved, uh, initially we thought, well, we'll ask the administration um, what the level of understanding and readiness is for their particular library. Um, the literature has shown that's a really bad idea because they often tend to have optimistic ideas or um, about the, uh, the readiness or understanding or, or possibly just not a real understanding of the requirement. So. That's why we evolved to, well, let's talk to the people who will actually have to do the work. Um, and I think part of the commitment to change um, that will be assessed uh, as in the readiness framework will show whether it, uh, they believe they have an uh, administration buy-in to making this change, right? So the survey questions will start pulling in that influence. So if there is a sense that, you no, know, we've talked with our or director or administration and um, it's not going to happen, then that's going to show up in commitment as not uh, being a uh, uh, ready. And probably also efficacy, because if they're not going to get the resources that they need because administration has said, we got no money, then yeah, 
so I think I think we can do this still, and it, I think I think we can make the case it'll still be a valid measure of uh, readiness, even without talking to the administration. Sure. I just have a quick question about your timeline. Mm -hmm. You said May 2020. So is May 2020 when you hope to administer the survey to your 340 libraries, or do you hope to have it done before then and have the results back by May 2020? Great question. Um, so I we hope to have the been asked to have our results back uh, in a report, uh, including all the other work that the task force is doing by May 2020. So yes, we will be um, running this survey probably in the fall, um, would be the likely time frame now. Things have been thrown off a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, great question. Uh, yeah. So I was just intrigued by your training slide. You said your like, first training source was Right. <laughs> are, are you intrigued? Are you from the Library of Congress? I'm not from the Library of Congress, but I'm from the United States, okay. and that is not your library. Like, I didn't sure. know if there was any, um, if there were any Canadian resources that were going to be developed. Yeah. So there are some. Okay. So there are Canadian organizations. Um, most of them closely follow the lead of. Library of Congress, particularly with BibFrame, since, I mean, to be honest, many of us um, are still learning about BibFrame ourselves, and much of that comes from the Library of Congress materials. Um, Olivier, who is a member of our survey group, is, is at the back. Um, do you have any other uh, other ideas on? <laughs> yeah, um, well, <clears throat> in Quebec, we follow the, the French National Library, and uh, I don't know what's the latest news from, from the European Big Friend Task Force, but it seems not to be on board. I think we had two Englishmen coming at the last meeting, which was last September, but three years ago, we asked a question to one of the French librarians and said, it's not on the agenda at all. I hope that changes. So the National Library of Quebec is following the BNF, so we have no, no training material, we're going to have to do homework and, and, and the agenda. The National Library of Quebec is close to the National Library of France, and since they, since they're not going to uh, adopt the trend in the near future, I think they will adopt it at the end of the day, but not in the near future, then we we are just looking at the RDA right now, and, and, and some people at the National Library of Quebec are, are looking at RDA as a way to do link data with big print. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of work to do, but I'm, I'm happy that we're we're looking at small libraries, public libraries, to be involved in this movement, and I'm happy that we're looking at the training issues, which for me is one of the biggest uh, resources we need to ask for the government, which is basically where readiness is there, but we don't have to be trained. I hope it's not the confusion. I'm, I'm not I'm not uh, writing the confusion right now in the survey, but I'm pushing. I hope that we'll be at least So that may be an outcome of the report is to say, we've identified there are major gaps in understanding um, and uh, hopefully there'll be time to see if we can identify materials or resources that are available for training. And if not, then we will need to either build these ourselves or work with others around the world. And possibly given the, the linkage from the French National Library of Bibliothèque and Athènes de France, that may be a good transition for Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Andrew, and uh, good morning to you all. A very brief uh, overview about uh, the European Big Frame Workshop, and uh, hopefully some further 
useful steps uh, that uh, um, can be taken and uh, your contribution to this uh, can be really, really precious. So the aim of the European Bitframe uh, Workshop is to be a forum for sharing uh, knowledge of, about practice of, production with, uh, and planning of uh, Bitframe implementation. The goal is to bring together people working in the transition from multi-linked data using Bitframe model and related tools. And uh, the aim is also to bridge progressively out uh, from the library domain uh, toward the archival and uh, the museum domain. That would, of course, uh, include uh, of, um, the, um, uh, I mean, uh, the work with uh, um, uh, together and uh, um, uh, with other ontologies. And the first uh, uh, workshop took place at, uh, in Frankfurt in 2017, in September, and uh, here on the slides, uh, you that you have given uh, two years ago. Um, the last one uh, was in Fiesole at, uh, um, at, um, at the European University Institute, and uh, um, you will find here the, um, the link to the presentations. Just a few um, information about the last uh, workshop. We had a quite global participation, a good number of uh, US, librarians and also um, 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 a number of uh, colleagues coming from other parts of the world outside Europe. Um, the, um, the workshop started with uh, uh, three presentations uh, from the Library of Congress that were very important to give an update and to introduce, of course, also um, uh, the, I mean, the attendance uh, um, uh, from Europe to, um, to the state of art of Bitframe and of the Bitframe editor. We had then a number of uh, presentations. I highlight here just a few, especially that involves uh, um, um, I mean the largest, uh, I mean um, a larger number of uh, institutions involved. Of course, I mean the first one is linked data for production with uh, Philippe Schroer. Uh, we talked then briefly about uh, Share VDE that uh, embraces uh, North American for US and Canadian libraries. Uh, there was a very interesting presentation about uh, the Swedish uh, National Library because they are really um, now in production with Bitframe, producing uh, original data and cataloging in, 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 in Bitframe. Um, we had an interesting talk from Hungary and um, uh, with, uh, with the MOCRA system that is now, I mean, that has the aim to embrace not only the library, but progressively also uh, the, the archival and, um, and, the new, and the new museum domain. So it's a very good, uh, concrete start. And we have a talk um, um, from Richard Wallace, and uh, it was also, um, I mean, um, on one side very concrete, on the other side a little bit uh, <coughs> provocative, <laughs> as you need to be, <laughs> and, and, and facing, and, I mean, uh, quite challenging new aspects. And he underlined, uh, um, I mean, three, um, uh, let's say, mainstream um, rules. One is Bitframe, the other one is uh, schema.org, uh, and the third one is uh, a linky mark, as he called it, because uh, there might be, of course, libraries that are not yet ready to implement uh, linked data, but that uh, are able and I mean, can prepare their future, I mean, um, 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 starting to embed um, um, URIs in uh, the mark. Um, Schema.org, I mean, it's needless to say why it's important and why, in any case, I mean, this helps uh, to be visible on the web. And, uh, and um, yeah, and Bitframe has a very large potential community, not only potentially in uh, for libraries uh, that can, of course, implement it and can, that can help to evolve Bitframe, I mean, and to, and to extend it as necessary. We had a number of uh, breakout sessions about uh, um, the expectations and, uh, and um, especially um, in 2017, and there was also a discussion last year, I mean, about a document that was prepared uh, for um, um, ILS tenders. Um, there were uh, discussions about a very, I mean, you know this better than 
I do I mean complex uh, um, aspects of work to work re 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 relations and how to um, move on with uh, with uh, I mean um, 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 diving more and more into practice with it. Um, uh, there were of course discussions about RDA and Bitframe, and I will come back to this in a moment. Uh, about training for Bitframe, and in the meantime, uh, there are a number of initiatives, especially in the Development Congress, that have been um, 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 taken, and uh, um, uh, how to um, um, engage uh, progressively uh, more and more the vendor community. These are some of the vendors that were um, involved, uh, and uh, there is also the link of the uh, Bitframe expectation for IMS. Um, the main topic, or among the main topic to be addressed as a community, um, uh, this, are, uh, this is a list that I mean, we, we shared among the, the organizing group of the European uh, Bitframe Workshop. So, of course, uh, uh, nothing fits everything, um, as Leif uh, Andersen uh, likes to underline. So um, it will be in future certainly necessary to, I mean, to map from one ontology to another in order to, I mean, to work in linked data and to be able to, to give the advantages to end users, I mean, embracing uh, um, I mean, uh, um, more than one domains. So the expansion of the community is necessary. Um, it is an inevitable that there will be a big heterogeneous approach um, um, from, from, from institutions, so this is part of the picture. Um, it is important uh, to move, of course, from experimentation to production, and, uh, uh, but I mean, the, the common sense is that there is now a critical mass of, uh, um, um, of uh, places uh, that are ready I mean, really to move on. But certainly very much now the speed uh, with which I mean, um, uh, we can all together move on will depend now from uh, I mean, um, uh, the cooperation among the community because there are still many question marks and there are still many uh, things that need to be addressed also I mean, on how certain format standards uh, and so on rules uh, uh, or practices has to evolve. These are some articles uh, of uh, the last workshop. And of course, there is uh, the important topic about RDA and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Bitframe. So after the workshop, uh, um, the organizing group uh, addressed a letter to the RDA steering committee uh, encouraging a conversation about the connection between RDA and Bitframe and proposing a working group to develop a set of guidelines. The first step of the conversation uh, underlined uh, um, a big difference, let's say, between, uh, I mean, among the two structures. So RDA has a very formal structure now, and uh, that has, of course, many advantages. Um, but on, on the other side, their counterpart in this case is a very informal uh, group uh, that uh, we feel is, uh, um, is good that stays informal for now because otherwise things would probably uh, slow down um, 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 drastically. So, I mean, one aspect that is under discussion now is how um, to build a conversation without binding, uh, I mean, uh, the, the RDA steering committee and, and, and uh, clarifying that, uh, I mean, they are talking with an informal group, I mean, that cannot promise um, um, precise text, I mean, but uh, um, just, I mean, with the aim that a um, clarification or a discussion is useful. And probably, I mean, uh, um, it is also important to clarify a, a, a possible misunderstanding, because, I mean, as we heard also yesterday from Sally McCallum, Bitframe is a container of uh, data using RDA, uh, but also, um, I mean, uh, um, um, data that uses other content rules. Uh, at the same time, RDA is now, um, I mean, um, um, bringing more in evidence his, its role also as data model. And uh, um, so we must, I think, uh, uh, clarify that there is no competition, or there should be no competition, because I mean, uh, nothing sh shall prevent to use them in conjunction between 
and at the A, as usually happens uh, in uh, the link data and in the environment. So this is where we are now, and we hope that in the next um, uh, meeting that will uh, take place in uh, Stockholm uh, on the 17th and 18th of uh, September, there will be progresses uh, in this discussion between the RDA steering committee and, uh, and, um, and the deep link group. So these are the dates. And these are some preliminary um, themes um, and, uh, about of course, um, updates from the Library of Congress and from the Linked Data for Production Group, uh, what's going on in Europe and in other parts of the world, um, uh, cataloging in practice, and uh, I mean, uh, um, um, there are now a number of institutions, uh, um, um, not only Sweden, but progressively also other that uh, start going native RDF um, um, cataloging workflow. There is, of course, um, I mean, a lot that uh, um, um, needs to be discussed about works instances and, uh, and so on. And we plan to have a number of hands-on sessions and uh, as, um, as, you, in, uh, as you see here. Um, um, please, I mean, uh, there are many, many, many in the coming weeks, uh, there will be also um, some messages going out to the major um, 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 mailing lists, uh, and uh, please participate, I mean, uh, if you can, because it's really very important to uh, have a, I mean, a cooperation and a collaboration from, from the wider community. And uh, uh, I don't know if you noticed that uh, we um, changed here um, um, from the European Lipton Workshop in Lipton Workshop in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> and the attempt was, uh, and there is a strong, let's say, uh, motivation to, um, and, and to introduce the word international Lipton Workshop. But there is, uh, at the same time, um, uh, the hesitance that uh, the workshop uh, as informal group is not uh, yet in the position to plan meetings uh, around the world. So it would be difficult to say if uh, it becomes an international group that uh, would be very, uh, I personally feel uh, very, very important because we have really to address certain things with one voice. I mean, of course, with very heterogeneous I mean, and, and, and definitions and so on. But it would be necessary to, 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 I mean, to, um, to hold the meeting once in Australia, once in Hong Kong, uh, and, and, and other places of the world, in America, in, 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 and so on. And I mean, we, um, um, we are unsure if this, uh, if, I mean, if uh, the time is ready and how this could be managed with, in a short term period. So this is just to explain a little bit this change and If there are any specific questions, Nancy, start with Nancy. Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> um, so, so I'm really interested in the discussions uh, between the RDA, um, the yeah. RSC, and and this group um, and your the European different group. Um, have, and so I'm wondering. How, so um, at the PCC Opco meeting last week, um, there was a lot of talk about RDA and the adoption for LRM. And, um, and at one point, as I was listening to their presentations, um, it's clear that they are embedding the RDA ontology and data model into the rules. Whereas before, there were the rules, there was the ontology and the model, and that was very nice. And so, so while I, I find it interesting that what you're saying is there should be no competition. I don't see how there's not a competition. Um, and so I'm wondering if those conversations have started or if they're going to start in September. Yes, I mean, uh, yeah, um, uh, I mean, a more concrete conversation will start in, in September. Um, uh, let's say 
the positions are quite distant, and so um, I would not be too optimistic that there will be changes uh, um, uh, I mean, in, in the short term. I mean, um, and that, 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 that can have a, a really an impact. I mean. um, but I mean, it's uh, the first thing that is very important now. Um, we feel is that is to clarify. Among the group that is working on implementing linked data, I mean, um, why things are like they are now, I mean, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and hopefully also to bring evidence and to bring, I mean, a stronger voice. Why, I mean, um, discussions should go in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. It's probably, I mean, uh, um, this is again a personal view. I was a little bit more optimistic at the beginning. I think now that it's uh, probably not necessary the best way to invest time to force, to try to force mm -hmm. a conversation that, uh, that, mm -hmm. uh, that would take a very, very long time um, I mean, uh, on things that are not feasible. I, I, I mean, uh, really, um, and where there is not enough consensus. But that's a personal. Um, I have a question about, so it's a big frame conference, I get that. It's not a Wikidata conference, it's not, it's a big frame conference. But LG4 is part of that conference. Is there any interest or thinking about Zenobia? Or is the European community so like dedicated to big frame No, 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 yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, 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 Link Data for Production has the interest uh, to uh, embrace in future uh, a wider international participation, uh, um, independently how the project in one two years uh, will will be named. I mean, and uh, and uh, I mean, see Nokia as we have uh, heard uh, also in these days is a very flexible um, tool, um, and uh, so um, uh, there is uh, I think there are absolutely big potentials that it's used. Uh, Together with other, I mean, editors, I mean, uh, also in Europe and in other parts of the world. And probably, if I can add something, probably in Europe more than in the US, we have a broader interest in something that is more than digital twin, but it's just for our a very heterogeneous uh, nature, because only thinking to uh, two different aspects, that is the uh, cataloging format and rules uh, in uh, US you have uh, and in Canada also you have Mart 21 as a u unique format we have a lot of different format in Italy nobody used Mart 21 with the exception of few libraries and I think that in France is the same and so on and also from a, 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 a cataloging workflow in Europe, you use uh, a lot of the copy cataloging uh, uh, concept. Why in Europe uh, the tendency is uh, to uh, versus original cataloging? So the the optic is totally different. And so, uh, from our viewpoint, uh, in Europe uh, will be easier to adopt uh, different ontologies. Uh, so an, a, an editor that will be able to manage a different ontology in the same time because nobody agree about the one form <laughs> and one and one. So probably this will open. Right, you need that flexibility. Yeah. I guess a, a, a question for LD4 participants is, is LD4, LD4, the LD4 community or whatever the grant project committed to implementing this frame. Or uh, from what I had read, it was it was looking more broadly at link data, but choosing this frame as as the the uh, scheme to go forward with implementation. But it's a commitment really more more than that. So so I think yes, I think the commitment is more than that. Mm -hmm. um, I think when the project started I think and and you may be able to confirm, but, um, but I think when the project started, we were told that um, Sinopia would only be, I'm 
99% certain. We were told the Sanofi would only be able to handle this range, but that has recently changed. Mm -hmm. And so with that change, that, that kind of opens it up for us. I, I personally would like to use a lot of different things besides this frame. Um, and, but um, but um, we also work with the Library of Congress. We are a shared cataloging community. And, and so um, locally, we may use some things besides the frame, but I think community-wise, we will probably try to stick with the status quo. I think it's fair to say, I mean, dovetailing with Isabel's question, it's going to be less about the client than it is about the profiles, exactly. right? So I, I think that what we're going to see over the next couple of years is development of more robust profiles and whether those are just bid frame profiles. Again, thinking back to the first linked data meeting, we were talking about the bid frame extensions and deviations, right? Yeah. Out of the gate, we had extensions and deviations because we're librarians. And so, <laughs> um, you know, profiling for all those different uses, I think, is going to be a critical activity less critical than what client application am I using to edit, create, reconcile, batch load link data. So can I, just really quickly, can I ask a follow-up to, to on your comments? So is the, do you think that the fact that you are doing, that you're not in Europe, there's less copy cataloging, more original cataloging, so less of a shared cataloging environment, do you, do you think that will impede um, or, or facilitate adoption? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> 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 not, not you the podium. Not the very heterogeneous really, because uh, I mean some uh, I mean institutions that are probably more courageous and and, 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 uh, and uh, can really take advantage of uh, creating uh, and this might also be simpler. I mean to start creating original records. And not only, I mean, also for a photo library, I mean, or, or, or for a photo library, or I mean, for, for using also um, uh, the TMO uh, ontologies for, for music, I mean, um, uh, for, uh, for the music domain, and so on. Um, of course, I mean, um, um, if you have, uh, if you, if you, um, for existing catalogs, we know that the heterogeneity of the records that were made. Uh, the decades, I mean, um, means a different kind of investment also at the beginning. And so it depends. I think, I mean, the picture will be very heterogeneous. So not facility in any case. Uh, uh, the, this heterogeneous in Europe uh, uh, doesn't facilitate the, the choose for one ontology and main ontology. And probably the scope of the group uh, is uh, also to, to um, to demonstrate in practice that something can be done using an ontology that is uh, as original, so close to Market 21, also in country that doesn't uh, use Market 21. In fact, one of the term to uh, decide who will uh, take part in the speech, for example, is uh, you give me something in concrete, mm -hmm. not so general. So also, this is important. Also because, uh, I mean, there are, I mean, data sets and linked data of many libraries in Europe out there since a long time, but not, as, not necessarily used. I mean, uh, and, 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 uh, and so we have to bring this critical mass now really into practice. I mean, there was a question, I think, you had. Well, well not that you answered it, but uh, I just, I'm still wondering where the French are. <laughs> um, this is a pity, I mean, that's really a pity. There was a French uh, colleague that was, uh, I mean, that, 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 that uh, had to quit the um, organizing group because he changed the uh, um, uh, institutional role and, uh, yeah, and so, and uh, certain decisions uh, um, are not uh, engaging, let's say, as we uh, hoped. Uh, but of course, I mean, it's part of this heterogeneity. I mean, the Tech National Advance is doing great things, I mean, really, I mean, and, and, and uh, with the linked data, I mean, um, um, so it's absolutely, um, I mean, um, they, I mean, we, 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 we watch and look to them uh, admiring what they are doing. <laughs> uh, but it's a pity that they are not part of Um, 
since today announced to adopt, uh, if I am not wrong, uh, some weeks ago to adopt the FDA. No? So if uh, FDA and Big Film don't find uh, a, a way to to speak each to other, probably they don't uh, adopt Big Film. I don't know. In the future. Best and BNF also just put out a tender to do a prototype using Wikidata okay. for mm -hmm. a subset of local authorities. So they're they're putting out a tender for training in Wikidata and experimentation with some of their local authorities. And that was a joint a Best BNF mm -hmm. uh, thing. So that you know looks like they're dipping their toes in the water in that, in that regard. But um, but I agree with Mikla having them in that European or the bid frame in Europe. Discussion would also be good. So, so a couple of oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I want to make sure we have time for Laura too. So, mm -hmm. can we hold the last questions and go ahead and let Laura clean us up and give us all the rest of the answers we're looking for? Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's all on you, Laura. No, all I have are more questions. <laughs> <laughs> You've probably got enough of those already. So I'm not in the folder. Here. environment and the, um, the LD4P for, uh, for project uh, in particular and its outcomes. So how many people in this room are uh, uh, from institutions that have at least one ex Libris product? Wow. Okay. So uh, I don't have to explain maybe too much about what Igloo and Luna is. <coughs> A, a little bit, I'm just going to say a little bit about actually about my group and about the organization and maybe a little more about what Ex Libris is doing and then a little more questions. So, um, so uh, the difference is Luna is for North America, that's Canada and the US and Igloo is for the rest of the world and don't ask me why but Ex Libris wanted it that way. Um, and. It makes it interesting when we have joint working groups across the uh, the, uh, the two organizations in terms of having people from almost all of the time zones and trying to find a meeting time that <laughs> will not cause someone to have to stay up after two uh, in the evening in the morning. So we um, <coughs> but we we uh, carry on um, and because we are uh, cross product as well as a joint organization working group. We also have to coordinate with the product working group. So that's how these user groups are organized, by product primarily. Um, and we've had some discussions lately about how we can do that better. Um, and this is just a list of our members. Uh, you can see with a lot of people, we've got some people who are here today. Uh, Shelly Lee, uh, my co-coordinator, she's actually on the Illumina side and I'm on the Igaloo side because uh, Emory University pays dues to be a part of Igaloo and the, it sort of worked out that way. Uh, but we have a number of members from uh, Europe uh, and from Australia and uh, Hong Kong as well as North America uh, and some liaisons to so an interesting group, we are currently about to start recruiting again for some more members, so I'll just mention that. Um, <coughs> and this started out actually on the Igaloo, the international side, uh, at a particular meeting where uh, I think three or four libraries made presentations about experiments with linked data that they had been doing. And this is in the era when BitFrame hadn't been announced yet, I think. 
and the European libraries, the British library and some other European libraries had either uh, converted their catalogs to linked data formats of various types or were planning to do so. So there was a great, there was a great deal of interest uh, which led to the formation of this group. And uh, two years later, um, the North American group formed because uh, there, a lot of interest had been sparked by the Good Brain Project. And we decided to, to operate as a joint group. That has been interesting. So how we work with the vendor, I think it was a little bumpy at, at first. I, I, I don't know the earliest history. We issued a manifesto, and, and Ex Libris didn't like having a manifesto. <laughs> for the first days, but, but really, it was a list of, of you know, customer desires and, and, and indications for where we think the future is going. And uh, they started to listen. We started to uh, bring in people to present use cases. Uh, they started to listen more. Uh, they were also listening um, outside of our group, of course, and they were listening to customers, and some of the customers, or potential customers, were saying, your, you know, your products are going to have to support linked data. Yes. I, I, I'm assuming this. I haven't heard details. Uh, but they're also looking at what competitors or potential competitors or, or just the community in general uh, are doing or offering. Uh, they're interested in LD4, uh, and will probably study the videos from this conference. Um, then they developed the business strategy, and then sometimes um, they don't always tell us in advance, but they but surprise, they are <laughs> they are doing something with linked data finally. So, uh, I this is a joke just to get a laugh, but and to get a cat into. The presentation, but um, <laughs> we, this is not indicative of our overall attitude towards Ex Libris. Uh, but uh, in 2016, um, they started what they called the Linked Data Collaboration. Uh, you had to apply to be part of this, and supposedly only a limited number of institutions could be part of it. And it was um, communication via base camp. And basically, uh, they were experimenting how they could introduce some aspects of linked data into their existing products without disturbing things too much, I think, uh, and, and how well that would work. Um, there was so much interest in that that the following year, they opened up the base camp to any interested customer. I think they also wanted to get more interest and more input, and that was very good. We've had uh, we have now people from the Library of Congress, which is the next Libras customer in that base camp, and, and people involved with PCC task group on your eyes on, were on there were able to give some advice about the current state of things. So that's a useful thing. And even though that collaboration ended in 2018, we're still keeping it. And, uh, it's useful for testing. Um, and these are just some of the things that we're doing. And I'm just going to touch on a couple of them. Um, uh, we do YouTube. Um, uh, Google, Google Hangout type webinars. Uh, we've had, um, you know, some LD4 participants, uh, uh, Christine Eslau and um, Bart uh, McGee did one for us. Um, um, Nancy Lorimer from Stanford did one. And, you know, we're open if, if someone thinks they have, would have something interesting for this community. We're going to have um, Jody Wilkinson in July, July 3rd, talking about the BibFrame editor. Okay. And that's relevant to the direction that Ex Libris is going. So what Ex Libris has been doing, this is a little bit about those sort of minimal outputs that came out of that link data collaboration. Um, not, you know, they wrote their own transforms, simple transforms from Mark. XML to maybe just the, the author subjects title, etc., to various vocabularies. Um, and um, RDA, they use the RDA vocabularies for one, and what's interesting is that they separated it out RDA work, expression, and manifestation. Um, Primo has a feature, and this is their discovery layer, whereby you can do something called deduping. And the closest analog to bringing together records 
uh, that are of the same um, expression in RDA speak and actually combining merging the records and the items and so forth. Uh, and that has proved so popular in spite of some <laughs> glitches with that algorithm that is used to do that clustering. That um, uh, I think it is an interesting use case in itself. Then uh, they also do something they call fervor, which roughly coincides with the RDA work, not BIM framework, the RDA work level. Okay, There's, this has been going on in Primo for quite some time. So they're using those algorithms uh, to, on the fly, as the records are being published, to separate them out into these sections. They're not interlinking you know, the, the, uh, the expressions of the same work yet. But they are at least producing data that is, that is cognizant of those, those categories or those entities, okay? Give, and giving them URIs that come internally from um, Alma, all right? Then um, they did something in JSON-LD that used some simple and they, they, they experimented with how could they pass URIs from Alma into Primo that could be used for discovery features by adding them to their internal XML format that they use called PNX. Um, as far as I know, no one has actually used those URIs, but there is a mechanism that they developed to do that. Um, more interesting is the linked data enrichment for uh, publishing and API. Um, <coughs> So if you if output mark XML, you can have subfield zeros added uh, based on the internal linkages with authority records for control vocab some control vocabularies, not all, but some you know, named subjects um, and uh, possibly titles. Not sure right now, but only it, only if those are linked to vocabularies that are. Libra system, okay? Now, not your local vocabularies that you might create. So uh, a characteristic of some of the features so far is they're not very configurable, but they are, you know, try, they're working towards sort of a full implementation of something without giving customers a whole lot of choice at this point. Um, so the Getty vocabularies uh, are an example of a limitation. They can't, uh, apparently, we can't import them into Alma because they're not marked for me. At least that was the last I heard that may have changed. Okay, things change. Okay, this is an example of, you know, a linked data enriched record. But these, um, these subfield zeros that were added are not stored in the Alma mark. They are only created on export. So maybe we, you know, we think is that useful or can, you know, is there another strategy ask them to consider. Um, but, you know, that was nuts. So the latest, you know, big thing is that um, they have incorporated uh, the Library of Congress um, developed mark converter, mark to bid frame conversion, and they keep it fairly well in sync. So for, since November of 2017, uh, uh, Alma users have been able to go into the, um, the catalog editor the record editor and see the bid frame rec rec um, um, uh, representation of the converted bid frame. And you can also get at it via API or you can publish in bid frame, okay? And uh, we have been, our group has been primary testers for that. Uh, so that's what it looks like, okay? And um, I think there are some a few other institutions out there that have experimented based on people will find things and, and, and ask about, comment about on Basecamp. Um, I'll get to some of the issues later. Uh, okay. Uh, in terms of Primo, oops, did I skip something? No, okay. In terms of Primo, I think that the, um, there are two things. One is they're going after that search engine optimization publish your catalog to the to the web and have it be picked up by search engines and hopefully uh, get paid enough page rank so that your 
users would actually see records in the search results uh, uh, that that you know that hope or that that aspiration. Uh, they have released something that uses the Primo sitemap feature uh, and schema.org vocabulary, and they're they're continuing to work on it. They say they're working with a consultant. I don't know if a consultant might be in, you know. I don't know who this consultant is. Uh, they say they're working with Google. I don't know with whom. But uh, they're, 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 they're continuing to work on it. And, and they had said, you know, if we can get this to work well enough to our satisfaction, it will stay and otherwise it will go. But this is true of some, some things that they release uh, that are, I don't want to say that they were unready for release, but they needed to, they <coughs> really, really tested production to get a feel for how well it was going to work. And this is that kind of a feature. Um, so it's there in Primo. Uh, otherwise, for discovery, so far they have not, I think there was a small widget that they experimented with a few years ago um, that wasn't very compelling, but. Um, they're, they've been sort of relying on the developer community, which is pretty strong and growing in, in, amongst Xlibris customers, to come up with things. And uh, so far we've not been able, I think we have one, one app, you know, that, or a blog post about how you could develop an author card app that could be plugged into your, um, to your Primo uh, search result individual uh, uh, record display. Uh, there's a lot more that could be thought about there. Uh, and what we are doing um, is we're starting to ask customers, what do you want to see? And then maybe we can have some strategies about how to get ex Libris and or the developer community to work on some of these ideas. Okay. Now in 2020 on the roadmap, and I have permission for this, but this this is posted on the web, so you should be able to get to it if you know how to navigate their documentation. The roadmap for Alma clearly has second half of 2020. Um, <coughs> catalogers will be able to natively edit records in Bitframe, and uh, we'll be able to search for them in Alma. Okay, and not much more detail than that. Um, we got a presentation last week at Aluna, the Aluna meeting, uh, on their sort of their link to data vision. Um, we're we have a lot of question marks about what this language means. Prime cataloging a new record by using linked data formats side by side existing records in various formats will continue to be managed side by side with linked data records an ecosystem that provides the ability to manage URIs for all records across institutions and Ex Libris' platform as part of a global ecosystem. That's, that's very interesting and provocative, but I can't answer any questions about that, so <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> uh, navigation leveraging relationship between linked records, for example, display navigation and data processing. And I'll just mention one more thing. They've also announced that they have a graph database, not linked data, but a graph database that, in which they're storing relationships between uh, information objects such as a book and a review of the book, which is something that I think has, is going to be released this month, uh, sometime in May. We, we haven't gotten in our test system yet, so I, I can't say, you know, anything much more about it, but that's very interesting to us and we want to know more about that also. Okay, some observations. It's, it's a for-profit company, okay? Uh, and so to interest them in, in, in adding features, uh, if that, where it's at cost to them, you have to make a case for, uh, will it be worthwhile for them to do it? I think that they are very, they're very interested and supportive of linked data, but they also have to look at how they how they can how they can support it and and, um, and continue as a business. All right. Um, Pro, they're part of ProQuest now, and um, ProQuest and Ex Libris through Primo Central product 
are dealing with proprietary metadata, primarily for articles. Okay, so that's that article ecosystem, not open data, and not linked for the most part either. Uh, libraries have realized great value by sharing metadata amongst themselves, uh, and giving and and um, I think most of them would be willing to give it away for free if it, if they have rights to it. But how is this linked data new ecosystem going to work? with linked data that's not open, or combinations of linked data that's open and not. So and here's some more questions. Why have some few people been using these APIs and, and experimenting with them? I could have some answers, but I'd be interested in yours. Why are so few doing something with BibFrame output right now, unless they're part of a grant-funded project? Uh, will, that, will there be more in the future? How do we jump? How do we you know, encourage that. Uh, are URIs that are generated on, on the fly or that are tied to a, a vendor system going to be useful or problematic? Um, is BIM frame going to be what we need or all that we need? Or are there going to be customers who prefer something else to BIM frame? We have some people on our um, working group who have said, you know, our library is not going to BIM frame. We are interested in RDA. They're, from, they're not from the US. They're some of our international customers. So uh, how, um, how would linked data be used in discovery systems? What's the end user benefit from going to linked data? We need to keep asking that question because if we can't show something at the end of it, uh, we're going to have a hard time selling uh, the change, the cost of change. And finally, we're, you know, we encounter all these little issues about conversion and certain mark fields that are problematic for us, and I'm sure others are grappling with too. So here's some more questions. I'll just put them that you can look at and decide whether you want to ask, answer, try to answer some of these questions, or perhaps ask me some. Uh, what about maybe linked but not open? I've already asked that one. What products, okay, here's, here's a good one. What, what do you see as, as something that libraries in general, and I'm not talking about the elite libraries, I'm talking about the, I, I don't know how many customers they had now, but a few years back, 5,000 customers that Ex Libris had them, um, for various systems that they own. Um, Many of them don't have a lot, whole lot of resources. M many of them don't have a, prog a programmer. What products and services would serve them well in, in, a, in a transition to linked data? What should they be asking for? Uh, but what should you be asking for since if you're an ex-Libris customer? Or, or what, should you, what should vendors in general start thinking about having <coughs> And then here's some links. So I think we've got a, a few minutes left for discussion and questions. I was thinking about those questions and the groups that Mikla was talking about, the, the, all the libraries in Canada. I was sort of picturing, you know, there are all these trains moving. Right on linked data. Some of them are going really fast. Some of them are on the side track. Some of them, you know. And I was thinking about, you know, we've got the Library of Congress, National Library of Medicine, PCC, LD4, about a dozen national libraries, about a half a dozen system vendors and suppliers, um, and Wikimedia. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then I was reminded of something my, my a story my father used to tell, where he said. Uh, there was actually a law on the books in the state of Texas in the 19th century that said when two trains meet at a crossing, neither shall proceed until the other has left. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, was thinking about, I was thinking about a dozen or 20 trains coming to a crossing. Um, so it, it's a pretty complex ecosystem now. So if, if folks have ideas or want to address some of Laura's questions or ask more questions of our speakers, um, we've got about 15 minutes to do so, so please. So I, I could probably look at this in my own system, but if we're, we're not using the bib frame um, generator, but is there any difference in primo if you're looking at a record from Mark versus a record from bib frame? Um, you can 
can see what it would look like if you converted it to bib frame. But does it That's, actually look different? Oh yes. Okay. Oh yes. No, you know the bib frame record looks different. Does the record look different in Prima? How does it no. look to the user? No. Okay. No, no. The bib frame conversion do doesn't touch Prima. Okay. Primo Primo doesn't eat bib frame. Okay. Right now. <laughs> So that could change because things are changing. Also, they're they're they have introduced something they call Primo VE, which is Primo more tightly coupled and using in indexes of Alma. So part of the preparation, I think, that they're going to need to do to introduce a, 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 a bib frame editor is to figure out how that indexing is going to work in Alma, so that you can find your record in Alma. But that may have implications for people on Primo VE which is not all of the customers. So we, we for example, we're, we have a standalone, not standalone, it's hosted in the cloud, but it's not multi-tenant. Uh, <coughs> and we haven't gone to the new UI yet. <coughs> Primo. So there are different flavors of people who at different stages with their Primos. Uh, and so how Vibrame would be adjustable into various stages of Primo implementation is one of those questions that so if the moderator can ask a question, so what's the purpose then in, in converting that mark record into bib frame? Why, why are you doing it? Um, we aren't doing it, Ex Libris is doing right. it, and that's a good question for Ex Libris, but I think that their interest was that, um, that uh, it was something that they could do, they knew there was a customer interest and that perhaps customers could have some linked data from a complete conversion of their of their mark records and experiment with what to do with it which I think is a very important question which is why we launched this campaign we call it user stories you know send us your user stories talk about functionality that would be that would be um, even just a small thing in your discovery system or somewhere else that you really need linked data to be able to do for one reason or another. Um, and that we, you know, we haven't got a huge response yet, but it's gotten people thinking. So yes. Certainly about I mean, the impact of, uh, on end users, and that's a critical aspect because, I mean, uh, after a research and development phase, and so, I mean, uh, as it was mentioned, Early, I mean, uh, the institution uh, needs support from the administration and, and so on. But I think, I mean, that uh, um, it must, uh, so. I mean, the approach must be uh, not only thinking about the current OPAC for the end users, I mean, but also, I mean, what link data can bring to research. I mean. mm -hmm. And so to various kinds of, uh, I mean, of, uh, of, um, um, of, um, of, um, of group of users. Because that's really the potential of the data, bringing together new tools, uh, new information coming from different uh, um, 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 domains that are now separated, I think, that uh, could also be even more important for scholars uh, and for research uh, and uh, comparing, and not only for end users, um, considering, I mean, I'm uh, thinking of end users, I mean, who uses now uh, an OPAC that are students, uh, or scholars, uh, researchers, but I mean, a larger audience. So, I mean, I think we have to target uh, in different ways uh, mm -hmm. this different kind of, uh, of, uh, of, um, of use cases. Mm -hmm. and, and, and. But um, it, in answer to, I guess, one of my earlier questions, what I got a lot, when we did our survey, it wasn't a huge number of responses. I would say about half of them were institutions that were involved in the link data in some kind. The other half were saying, I'm either, I'm desperately, I, you know, really, really want to work with this, I'm really interested, I have no time. We're, do, we're our, our library is down staff, you know, and we're still recovering from the recession. We, 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 we just don't have the staff and time uh, to devote to doing anything with this right now. We, you know, we want, we want you to carry forward for us and make it so that we can get where we need to go so that we can do things. We can't, we can't help with that effort. And maybe a few also said simply, I don't have time to think about this. 
<laughs> and those, unfortunately, tend to be sometimes um, by top administrators. <clears throat> so there's a. It does take time. It, it takes you know. It takes some commitment and and a, and a learning curve, right? Nancy, you were talking about. <laughs> You know, when you start out, it's a learning curve. Um, so my concern is that we reach the certain turning point and, 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 and the necessity of doing fifth grade becomes apparent. That'll be the turning point. We can't do X, this new thing that we're all committed to doing in with Mark anymore. We've got to go to fifth grade. Then all of a sudden, you have these hundreds and hundreds of library staff people, people who need to get up to speed. Who's going to teach them? Dan's team is going to train all of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do this really scholarly survey. <laughs> uh, um, there so was a, is a hand back here. scramble things up uh, uh, and be able to and, 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 and be able to meet the basic functions that we're supporting now of, of just bedrock discovery, known item discovery, you know, and 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 and, and delivery. Okay, all that's gotta mesh together.
I understand that link data is supposed to work. <laughs> yes, so, so a couple things. So, so I think that ShareVDE is such a great example of how it should work. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I know, and, and you guys are working on a user interface right now to, to improve upon that. But when I want to, um, when I want to get buy-in from my administration, I show them ShareVDE. Mm -hmm. um, and say, this is, this is all built, what you're looking at this user interface when we do the search right now, this is all built on, this is all built off of linked data. And, and here is an example, even, even in its first pass, here is an example of what you can present to a user. And I, and I think it does every, it, it does the things that we want linked data to do. So, so, um, so the, other, the other side of that is to, to bear in mind that this is, there is not going to be an abrupt, one day we do mark, one day we do goods grading, it's over. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so I know, I know yeah, that. I think both, that's what it's the national, is talking about in there. So, so it's going to be iterative, and uh -huh. and so while I will be to completely honest, I was not thrilled with a lot of the things that I saw that Alma was doing, and I know when we're going to be going to Alma in a short period of time, and I'm not really happy about that. <laughs> but, but, um, but it. Uh, so, so I think the way you approach it is to think of it as iterative. Um, you know, the national libraries are committed to still outputting MARC for our constituents with the understanding that the smaller libraries <coughs> will not be able to take the grant funds if they're going to take records directly from us. Um, so, so both the Library of Congress and the National Library of Medicine are, are at least are committed to that. Um, and, and I will tell you also that the National Library of Medicine, while <coughs> the Library of Congress talks about putting out as full a mark record as they possibly can. The National Library of Medicine is really more interested in looking at what is a minimum viable mark record that we can put out to try to wean people off of using mark. So, um, so, so there may be different approaches, but there, there, you know, um, I think I think you have to think that this is in, this move is going to be iterative. It's going to be over time, and we still have a few years yet um, to, to do that iteration and for people. Vendors to figure out how to do this and to get it right. Um, so I'm tempted by it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking of what you were saying when they output into Primo, if they do that, the, the URIs for all of the terms. I mean, it's all there. I mean, it's just a question of turning it on, isn't it? I mean, like for, for public display, like when, when the. When the uh, there's a difference between a URI that's a link. That's right. hyperlink that shows right. up. Or something they could, this is like potential. And the URI that you don't necessarily want to show to people, you want to use it to query right. Wikidata or something else. And I think that was the idea behind it. There's an actual link section that says URIs. That's, and that's the way they had set it up. And, you know, when, as they were implementing it, we were testing it, they were getting comments like, why don't you just why don't you just include the triples here? You know, <laughs> people were thinking for they're saying, why, you know, why do we need this XML? Can we work from directly from, uh, uh, you know, graph fragments or whatever that contain the relations? What's related to what? Really hard question. How do you, you know, how do you visualize link data like this that's got some textual elements? in a way that makes sense to users. Because it's not flat, it's multi-dimensional, but uh, most people don't really like looking at those little dots and lines. Uh, maybe if you're actually working with data that's been an analyzed, it could be useful visualization, just like a graph could, but, but, how, but how do you present it? How do you present multiple relationships in a way that's useful. Last comment. So, so, because, well, actually, I'm going to push it back to you. Um, <laughs> because... Okay, it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just, well, just because, because I think one of, the, one of the issues that you come up against with vendors uh, and when it, it, with existing, pre-existing platforms where they're trying to take a pre-existing platform and you're trying to accommodate a new technology in that, and so I'm thinking, you know, 
you guys at OCLC are looking at how, what are the platforms we need to build to accommodate this, rather than how do we make the platforms that we already have, mm -hmm. how do we make these two fit together, right? Right, so, because I mean, OCLC will, will accept the data. You know, OCLC printed cards for 45 years <laughs> after the mark record was invented, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm hoping yeah. we don't have records for 45 years after bid frame is in production. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, all the middleware, anyone involved in any kind of middleware is going to have to deal with multiple forms of data for some time to come. We're going to, we've heard several times just in the last two days about hybrid environments. You know, we're going to live in that hybrid environment. It's just how quickly the one graph is going to go up and the other one's going to, quickly the other one's going to go down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks for the engagement.